Dad, <laughs> where were you? I've been outside. I, I I walked around the park twice. You went for a walk? Don't lie, Dad. No, I'm not lying. I took a walk into the park and I f it felt great. You know the runner's high. You, you well, I forget what I don't know what they call it. The runner's high. Yeah. Let me sit down for a second. <laughs> Did they? Oh man, I got it. You don't look well, Dad. Actually, you look a little peaked. What you're seeing as peaked is just a it's a healthy glow. I walked over two and a half miles, Ben, at a brisk pace. Mm. I'm going to try to do this every day. It's amazing how when you get old, that walking becomes a hobby. <sighs> it's pathetic, huh? Yeah. Like you actually can take the stuff that used to be just necessities, like chewing mm -hmm. and swallowing. Hobbies. All hobbies. <laughs> You know, wh while I was out walking, I passed by the uh, municipal gardens. You know the little gardens on Jones Street? It was actually exciting to see what people were doing there. I mean, those little gardens. Yeah. I mean, I've seen people garden there. And I'm not quite sure it's exciting, but I've seen it. Well, the idea of making something from nothing is, is what's exciting about it. Dad, you've seen those gardens a hundred times. Why, why now? Six weeks ago, even, it was just dirt. And now it's, you know, it's still dirt, but there's things peeking their heads out. <laughs> One walk. You know what, Ben? I think I'm going to try that. I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to try and rent my own plot. You're going to get one of those plots and and gardening. <laughs> ben, you, you think I'm joking about this, but I'm actually going to do this. Having some rhythm in your life and having some sense of continuity hmm. is an important thing. So you think it'll be a healthy hobby for you now? I'm not just talking about what it means to me. It's also, it's for you I'm doing this because these things are going to grow and hopefully someday you'll take an interest in them. Like what do you plan on planting? You like veal? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Laura. Yeah? Do you know anything about gardening? Um, not really. I'll oh. tell you why I'm asking, because you, you know the, the city gardens where you can rent space? Yeah? I was actually thinking about getting a, a little plot and... and <laughs> really? Uh, oh, yeah. I, I actually am going to go do it, Laura. I really am. I'm looking forward to it. Dr. Katz, I just can't imagine you, like, digging in the dirt on your hands and knees. <laughs> No shirt? Does that help? No, I really... Tank top? No. Pasties? Ew. Hi, my name is Mitch Hedberg. Uh, I'm coming in to uh, see, uh, see the doctor at 11 o'clock appointment. I'm sorry, what? I mumble a lot. Did you hear anything I just said? <laughs> I don't own a cell phone or a pager. I just hang around everyone I know all the time. If someone needs to get a hold of me, they just say Mitch. And I say what? And turn my head slightly. I used to be a hot tower roofer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that day. Hmm. I bought a donut and they, they gave me a receipt for the donut. Right. I don't need a receipt for a donut, man. I give you the money, you give me the donut. End of transaction. We don't need to bring ink and paper into this. I just cannot imagine a scenario where I would have to prove that I bought a donut. Some skeptical friend, don't even act like I didn't get that donut, man. I got the documentation right here. You know, on a traffic light, green means go and yellow means yield. Mm -hmm. But on a banana, it's just the opposite. Right. Green means hold on. And yellow means go ahead. Right. And red means where did you get that banana? Hmm. I opened up a yogurt and underneath the lid it said please try again. Because they were having a contest I was unaware of. But I thought I might have opened the yogurt wrong. Or maybe your play was trying to inspire me. Come on Mitch, don't give up. Please try again. A message of inspiration from your friends at your play. Fruit on the bottom. Hope on top. I eat a lot of sandwiches, and sometimes I don't want a sandwich, and that's when I realize everything's a sandwich. Like I ordered a salad, and they brought me a plate with lettuce, cheese, bacon bits, and croutons. It's a sandwich, some assembly required. You know when you go to a restaurant on the weekends, it gets busy, so they got to start a waiting list. Mm -hmm. They start calling out names. They say, like, Dufresne, party of two. Table ready for Dufresne, party of two. Right. And if no one answers, they'll say the name again. Dufresne, party of two. But then if no one answers, they'll just go right on to the next name. Bush, party of three. Yeah, but what happened to the Dufresnes? No one seems to care. Who can eat at a time like this? People are missing. You people are selfish. The Dufresnes are in someone's trunk right now with duct tape over their mouth and they're hungry.
Ben, guess what? Um, I'll give you a hint. Okay. I'm on the waiting list. You're on the waiting list. For the gardens, Ben. You're on the waiting list. Yeah. Congratulations. How long did they say you might have to wait? Well, uh, it could be anywhere from six weeks to three years. Well, I'm glad. I'm very happy, actually, that uh, that you're on because I have some good news too. No, what's that? Well, I bought you uh, a whole bunch of gardening equipment over at the uh, garden supply shop. Oh, great. Great. What'd you get? Well, I just got you, you know, sort of the, the standard stuff. I got your garden bag. Mm-hmm. I got you some small garden shovels of different sizes. Mm-hmm. I got you one of those, like, it's like a fork, a little huge fork. Oh, I know what you mean. It's like, um... That tears up the, uh... The dirt. The dirt. Yeah. You didn't get me any dirt, did you? Uh, I got you, a uh, fertilizer. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you, fertilizer stinks. Doesn't it say that right on the bag? <laughs> I was wondering if, if you do get a garden plot, whether I can be the guy who flies by and sprays it with insecticide. You could be if you had a plane. It would be you know, very hard. Uh, well, you rent and one. And a pilot's license. And, and some insecticide. Well, that's easy enough. Well, I'll make some calls. Uh, Matt Siegel, here to see Dr. Katz. Could you have a seat, please? Okay. You know, I'm recently divorced and I'm in a lot of pain. Mm, yeah, I heard. What do you mean you heard? Well, you talked about it on the air. I did? Yeah. Oh, God. But have you been in therapy before? There was a time in my life when I was self-medicating, doctor. Right. Does that count? No. Matt, what is the name of your radio show, by the way? Well, we call it Maddie in the Morning. It sounds infantile, doesn't it? Well, it really does. It sounds like a show, a baby show. It's, it's awful. I'm guessing you were probably the guy who picked that name. This isn't good. Am I right? Do you ever help any of your patients? You know, it's okay to take a swipe at yourself without taking one at me. I know. I'm sorry. That's, that's another problem I have. I find that I'm spiteful and vengeful. You want to bring everyone down with you. Can I? Dr. Katz's office. It's Ben, Laura. I know. Laura? Yeah? Have you uh, talked to my dad today? Well, yeah. Well, you know his new thing, that he has a new hobby, which is he wants to get a plot at the common gardens. and Right. And like, you know. Right, gardening. What's wrong with that? Well, I just think it's a dumb thing. I told him it's not a typical hobby for an older man, you know? Well, actually, it is. It is? It's probably the most typical hobby for an older man. Gardening is. Well, yeah. Y- you're serious? Yeah. I think it's more of an older woman's hobby. Oh, well... If you want to go see older men, you go to the Turkish baths. That's more of a hobby for older men. Hmm. I'll try to remember that. Matt, last week you were telling me how you feel somehow that your connection with your listening audience has deteriorated over the years. Is that correct? Well, it seems as though the people that I meet that are bright and insightful don't care for me very much. Right. And yet I'm very popular with the dullards. Hmm. Well, let's try an experiment here, Matt. This might help. I don't know. It seems to me like you're holding so much in right now, so much anger. This is sort of the psychotherapy equivalent of the Heimlich maneuver. If you stand up for one second, let me just push on on this area of you right here. Hmm. I guess it did seem a little odd all of a sudden, gardening. Exactly. I mean, how do you come up with gardening all of a sudden? I'm thinking something odd, something curious. Huh. So then I go down to the plot to check it out, right? Yeah. And aha. Uh-huh. What? Aha. Uh-huh. Laura. Watson, I can hear you. What, Ben? Mm-hmm. Spill it. Livingston, I presume. Huh? Ben? Yes, Laura. What? All right, well, I go down there, right? Yeah. And shazam! Uh... But I go down to the plot, right? Yes, and... To the public gardens by Jones Street. And? And I go check out the plot he was looking at. Right. And right at the plot next to the one he's looking at. Greta. Who's Greta? An older, very distinguished-looking Scandinavian woman. Yeah? Apparently divorced, blonde hair, very attractive, leggy. Oh. So I realized that it had nothing to do with gardening. My dad just wants to meet a woman. Well, I mean, what's wrong with that? That's kind of sweet. That's ridiculous, Laura. You don't go to a public garden to meet a woman. Well, where else are you going to go? Well, you don't know where she's been. Oh, she's been in the garden. Uh, Look, it's just no way to meet somebody. I would have done it differently. Well, Ben, I don't really think that you're one to be giving advice on how to meet women. Well, you know. In fact, I think that it's a great idea. I mean, kind of sweet and romantic for, for somebody to be willing to look foolish just to get to know a woman that, that they might be interested in. So you'd be charmed by, like, if somebody, you know, 
know, the people who tuck in their shirt and, and then zip up after. And there's a little bit of shirt hanging out of the zipper. That's charming, right? Well, it can be. Really? Yeah. Oh. So what? Flatulence. Also charming, right? Ugh. Matt, I think your perception of your listening audience is skewed towards the people who actually call. So you're telling me that the people who don't even have the strength or the wherewithal to dial the phone are the actual core audience? I think somebody who calls in to talk to a radio personality is somebody who is very needy and somebody who wants to be the show. They don't want to hear the show. Why are you fixated on who calls radio stations? I come here in personal pain. I mean, are you fascinated with my profession, doctor? I'm not fascinated. It's an interesting choice you've made. It's a lonely life, you know. You sit in a little room and you talk to no one. You talking about now? There are parallels, I have yes, to say. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, where you been? I was at the garden. I figured. Were you in somebody else's garden? <clears throat> well, some some of the people are, you know, it's actually a really nice group of people, and, and some of them are showing me a couple of gardening tricks. Really? Yep. And uh, were, were a whole bunch of people showing you, or just one person in particular? Well, no no one in particular. You know, the, it's a community of gardeners. Right. Yeah. Was Greta there? Yeah, she was there. Really? How do you know Greta? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just say I was at the gardens today, too, Dad. And I met Greta. Why were you snooping around the garden? I wasn't snooping. And what did she say about me? What do you mean? Why Greta. are you so interested? Well, because, you know, I don't know. Dad. No, you said you, you said you met Greta. Dad, the jig is up. I know what's going on. I know you like Greta. She's a perfectly nice person. Why shouldn't I like her? Dad, I guess I'm just proud of the old man, you know? You're going out of your way to, uh, to meet a woman. It's very chivalrous. I'm not going out of my way. I, I, I am gardening, and among my friends at the gardens is a woman named Greta, who I find very good company, that's all. Mm. These people are very genuine, very warm, and... Uh, so how did it go with uh, with Greta today, did you? Pretty damn good. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be an easier way to meet women. I think I've gone to something with this gardening. I mean, it's not, not why I'm doing it. I'm not doing it to meet women, but... I mean, it just seems so silly. It makes everything look so silly, like you're actually going to go garden. Just to meet that woman, Greta. Yeah. It's funny. Well, have you ever seen a square dance? That's crazy, too. You're not going to do that, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> People in the parade are cocky, you know? They, they think that they... Uh that they have attracted an audience, but really it's just people waiting to cross the street. Right. I could attract a crowd too if I stood in everybody's way. Hmm. I got into an argument with a girlfriend inside of a tent. That's a bad place for an argument because then I tried to walk out and slam the flat. That's tough. How are you supposed to express your anger in this situation? Zipper it up really quick. I was standing by the door and uh, Security guard came over and he said, you're going to have to move. You're blocking the fire exit. As though if there was a fire, I wasn't going to run. If you're flammable and have legs, you are never blocking a fire exit. Right. I like an escalator, man, because an escalator can never break down. It can only become stairs. Right. There would be no sign that says escalator temporarily out of order, just a sign that says escalator temporarily stairs. I was working at the Riviera Hotel in Las Vegas, and there was four comedians on the bill, and we all had similar hair because we were all using the Riviera in-house shampoo. Right. It's two-in-one shampoo, and two-in-one is a bad term because one is not big enough to hold two. That's why two was created. If it was two-in-one, it would be overflowing. I think foosball is a combination of soccer and shish kebabs. Hmm. Foosball ruined my perception of soccer. I thought you had to kick the ball and then spin round and round. I can't do a backflip, much less several, simultaneously with two other guys that look just like me. There's something about planting seeds and coming back every day and seeing how they're doing, mm -hmm. nurturing. Mm -hmm. It's the getting out of the house, the sunshine, mm -hmm. the sense of community. Come on, come on, cats, cats. What's the catch here? What do you 
mean catch? Why are you so suspicious all the time? You know, maybe Jonathan is just looking for a nice hobby. Thank you, Julie. Gardening is definitely something that can relieve stress, rejuvenate the soul. Right, Jonathan? No, no, I mean, sort of. I, I mean, I'm doing it for relieving stress. See? But I also enjoy watching this particular woman digging up the dirt. Jonathan? In fact, I think that's the part that rejuvenates my soul. I know it. I know it. You're doing it for a woman. All right, so it's not about growing anything. You're just trying to get close to this woman. Well, and does and she has a gardening plot there. Yeah, she has a plot. And, um, you know, she's been showing me a couple of tricks. <laughs> you know, <Hadley> here. <laughs> She takes the seeds. She goes like this. Baby wants a new pair of shoes. Then she puts them in the ground. <laughs> she said a lot of it's just luck. <laughs> I can't even believe that you got one so soon. Yeah, Ben, I, I feel like I just won the lottery. They called this afternoon, and my, my number came up. Well, I thought that you said it was going to be six months to a year. Not... Well, you know, I guess I guess uh, something happens to open up a plot, you know? Somebody leaves or dies, and then one opens up. It's like an, it's like an apartment. I guess. I guess. Or, or people, other people drop off the list. You know, they just don't have the patience that I have. So where is... Um... It's plot number 16, isn't it? 16. Is, what, is that what it says? It's right over here. Wait a second. This is your plot? No, that, that can't be that plot, because that's uh, that's Greta's plot. That's right, I remember. It's got to be some kind of mistake, Ben, because this is... Uh, this is 16. So Greta's apparently gone. Yeah. She must have uh, left and moved out. Well, she she wouldn't have just moved out without um, saying goodbye. Are you hurt by it? Of course I'm hurt, Ben. I'm devastated. Well, Dad, you know what? You, you could have... It might as well have happened this way. I think it was easier on you. Number one, you don't have to garden now. True. And, um, two, you know, you save yourself from getting hurt later. We can't go through life afraid of being hurt because that way you, you won't know love. You know, these, uh, these relationships have a cumulative value. A little bit of love here, of caring here, it adds up to nothing at <laughs> the end of the day. Well, these you're are, home alone. These are tough times for you. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do without all the walking and the gardening. I was thinking about getting a, um, a cactus. What do you think about that idea? Well, we certainly have the fertilizer. <laughs> <laughs> Are you familiar with the with the Rorschach test? I've never taken one. I know I'm familiar with the test. Well, the idea is I'm just going to show you an image, and you tell me whatever pops into your head, and there's no right or wrong. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you this, and tell me what it, what's the first thing that pops into your head. The Harvard-Yale game. Huh. Now this one. Harvard Princeton. Um, what does this remind you of? Well, it's a, it's a cave, some kind of a cave, a bad cave. That's right. Are you an only child? No, although I don't really have much contact with my brothers and sisters. But as a child, were you competing with them for the attention of your parents? Well, I like to feel as though we all lost. How many of you were there? Three. A brother and a sister. Right. Isn't it always like that? Mm. Did you have a lot of friends when you were a kid? Yeah. Interestingly, I'm friendly with a lot of my childhood friends. You still you still maintain relationships with them? Well, that's the good news. Yeah. The bad news, I don't seem to have made a new friend since I was seven or eight years old. See, I, I don't know why that's bad news. It just says that you are a guy who is loyal. Right. Who likes to take things as far as they can go. Mm-hmm. And who can't make new friends. I can't wait till this session is over because I have a roll of lifesavers in my pocket and pineapple is next. That's great, Mitch. This shirt is dry clean only, mm -hmm. which means it's dirty. Hmm. I wrote a script and I gave it to a guy who reads scripts and he read it and he said he really likes it, but he thinks I need to rewrite it. I said, forget that. I'll just make a copy. I'll go to Kinko's because Kinko's is my favorite copy center if I had to pick one. Mm -hmm. Because they're open 24 hours. Right. That's great. Like if it's 5 a.m. and then I decide I need two of something. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Kinko's. No problem. See, I'm a dreamer, man. And when I was a cook, I'd always work with people who weren't dreamers. Mm -hmm. Like, I was cooking at this restaurant, and I put a hot dog on the grill, and my kitchen manager came over. He said, Mitch, put the hot dog up here 
in the right hand corner of the grill. So in case you get a whole bunch of orders at once, you have all this space available. Right. See, that's how I knew he wasn't a dreamer. Because the day I give up my dreams is the day I have strategic grill location. Hmm. A dreamer has a philosophy. The entire grill is hot. Whoops. You know what the music means, but we're going we're gonna to have to stop. Our time is up. Well, okay, that's cool. I, I got that lifesaver waiting for me, man. You know, you want one? You, want, you can have the one after the pineapple, which would probably be cherry, which is everybody's favorite. Well, I, I don't know if it's everybody's favorite. Ah, oh, see, man, you, you look at things too deeply. Come on. Cherry's good. Thank you.